Good morning, fourth graders, and welcome to Thankful Thursday. I hope you're ready to have a good language class today. Let's go ahead and get started with a little bit of review. This week, we've been talking about verb tenses. How many tenses are there? There's three tenses. Tense always means what? Time. There it is. Present means it's happening right now. Past means it's already happened. Future means it will happen later on. Yesterday, we talked about the five rules on how to change a verb from the present tense to the past tense. So yesterday was all about those past tense rules. Today, we're going to kind of combine um, yesterday's lesson and the previous lesson to see if we can differentiate, that's a big word, it just means if we can tell the difference between the two. Remember, we're listening for that d sound, and that's usually going to uh, signal to us that it's past tense. I'm going to start out our lesson today by actually reading to you a story, and we really need to turn those listening ears up because I'm going to ask you at the end of the story whether you think that story all of the verbs were in past tense or were all of the verbs in present tense? So past, present, you decide. Here we go. David raced through the forest as fast as he could. Every now and then he glanced over his shoulder to see if anyone was following him. Suddenly he tripped over the root of a huge tree and sprawled across the ground. Oh no, he moaned. I think I sprained my ankle. You decide what tense was that story in. If you answered past tense, good for you. Some of the indicators, some of those words, those action verbs that we were listening for that showed us that it was in past tense were words like he raced. There's that ED. He raced. He glanced. He tripped, he sprawled, moaned, sprained his ankle. All those de-ending words are going to be clues that this story has already happened in the past. Listen to this next story. In the most exciting part of the book, Katie leaves the house in the middle of a snowstorm, goes to search for her lost brother. The snow whirls into her eyes and blinds her. She calls her brother's name again and again. Finally, she hears an answer and turns toward the sound. What tense was that story in? It was present tense. I'm going to read through some of the verbs that I read in the story. Verbs like leaves, goes, swirls, blinds calls, hears, and turns. We usually use present tense in our writing if we're talking about um, a story that's happening in today's time. Uh, we would use past tense, like in our first story, if we're talking about um, like a story in history, a story that's already happened, or a fictional story. Usually those are written in past tense. But if you're talking about something that's happening in our time, that's, that story is usually going to be written in present tense. The trick is, students, is when you're writing, and you're writing a story, or you're writing a paragraph, you want to avoid switching tenses if you can do that. If you're writing a story that's already happened, you want to stick with that past tense. So that means all of your verbs need to be in the past tense. You would never go from past to present. We're not going to switch between those. So what I'm going to need your help with today is help with completing page 205. Now, I've actually written the um, a lot of this page up on the board. I'm going to move my monitor in just a second. And our job for the first story that we're going to read about a beaver, our job is to take all of the verbs and change them to past tense. Because remember, when we are writing a story, we want all of the verbs to be in the same tense. We don't want to flip-flop between present and past, past to present. So let me go ahead and get my monitor all switched over. Here we go. All right. Can you see? hope so. All right, there we go. Let's take a look at the first one. 
the beaver blank in the dirt. Now, all of this has already happened. It's happened in the past. So we're going to take roll, and that applies with our first rule. Let me move this just a little bit so you can see our rules from the other day. Okay, the first rule was just add an ED. I apologize about the glare, I'm so sorry. So we're gonna do that. R O L L E D there. The beaver rolled in the dirt. Just add an ED. Just add an ED. The beaver look dirty. Not right now. This happened in the past. Add an ED. L O O K E D. Ants crawl into the beaver's fur. Hmm. Add an E D. The beaver comb its fur with its claws. What do you think we're going to do? Add an E D. It blank itself carefully. Do you notice that this is the rule that we use more than all the others? It's still important to know the rest. Sometimes we have to drop an E or double the final consonant if we have a short word that ends with a short vowel sound and a consonant or change the Y to an I before we add an ED. But here it's just going to be rude. Add an ED. For the next story about a fox, we are not writing those verbs in the past tense. We're practicing writing those verbs in the present tense. Remember, we do have a couple of rules for present tense. We have to decide what kind of subject we have, whether it is a singular subject or a plural subject. And they have to agree. The subject has to agree with the verb in number order. So if we have singular over here, it's got to be singular over there. Singular verbs end in S. Remember the S is kind of like that volleyball that we're passing back and forth, one side to the other. If the subject has the ball, the verb will not. The ball is the S, okay? So here we go. The red fox hunt in the forest. Who or what is that entire sentence about? Fox. Okay. Fox is singular. Singular means one. Is the volleyball living here? The S? No. So that means the volleyball needs to be over here. We need to put an S at the end of hunt. H-U-N-T-S. This is singular. This is singular. Singular verbs end in S. Let's keep going. It blank very carefully. It blank very carefully. Who or what is that entire sentence about? It. It is singular. Singular means one. No volleyball there. So we have to have the volleyball or the S over here. M O V E S. It moves very carefully. The crafty fox blank toward the rabbit. Who or what is that entire sentence about? If you answer fox, good job. Fox is our subject, F-O-X. Fox is one, it is singular. No volleyball over here, no S. So we need to have an S over here. C-R-E-E-P-S. This is a singular verb because singular verbs end in what? S. Singular verbs end in S. It blank close to the ground. What is our subject? It. Is it singular or plural? Singular. So we need to have a singular verb. Singular verbs end in S. But look carefully at this word. We can't just put an S on that. What does it end with? C-H. What is our rule? Say it with me. C-H-S-H-S-X-Z. -S -S Add an S behind the E. Not just S, not just E. E-S does it accurately. So for crouches, it should be C-R-O-U-C-H-E-S. 
crouches is now a singular verb because singular verbs end in s. Why did we have to choose a singular verb? Because we already have a singular subject and they must agree in number. It crouches close to the ground. The last sentence, here we go, and we'll be done with this story that's written in present tense. That means it's happening now. The fox blank on the rabbit. Now, here, let's take a look at this. Pounce is the word that we have. Try not to give any answers away. Did you see that? The fox blank on the rabbit. The subject is fox. How many foxes do we have? Just one. If this is singular, the verb needs to be singular. There's no volleyball over here, so there has to be a volleyball over here. That means we're going to add an S. There we go. The fox pounces on the rabbit. Let's take a look at that bottom section of your book. I'm going to move my monitor back over. There we go. All right, thank you for your patience, students. It says most of the verbs in this paragraph are past tense. Proofread the paragraph. Use proofreader marks to delete the verbs that are not past tense and add the correct past tense verbs. I'll read the story. You can follow along. Four raccoons lived in the hollow tree. They seemed curious. Father raccoon opens some garbage cans. The baby raccoons hunt through the garbage. Mother raccoon unlocks the chicken coop. The raccoon family explored everything. This story is supposed to be written in past tense. That means all of the verbs that are in this entire story must end with the d sound if we're talking about past tense. So let's take a look. You know I ask you usually to number the lines, so let's take a look at line number one. Line number one, our verb, we actually have two verbs. The first verb is lived and seemed. Do those words end with a d sound? Yes, they do. So those are already past tense. Look at line number two. Our verb is opened. Does that end with a d sound? Yes, it does, so that is okay. Line number three, our verb in this line is hunt. Hunt, did you hear a d sound? I didn't, so here's how we need to fix that or correct it. Take your pencil, draw a straight line and delete hunt. Now we're going to use our pencil to add in the correction. Draw your carrot, and in the space, we want to put hunt in the past. So let's add our ED. That is good to go. There's one more, though. Line number four. The verb is unlocks unlocks. Unlocks. I didn't hear a d sound. I heard an s. Okay. So what that means is this is a verb where they switched from past to present. And remember, we can't do any verb tense switching in our writing. So let's delete unlocks. And we need to add in the correction, which is unlocked with an ED at the end. Okay, students, we have done all of the front page together. Your task now is to go ahead and stop the video and start working on the independent practice on your own. As with all of our videos, I want you to do as I want you to do as much as you possibly can of the back on your own. If you get stuck, go back and either rewatch this video or circle that number and we'll discuss that during our FaceTimes together. I hope you have a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you next time. Love you guys. Bye-bye.